Intel's next-gen Panther Lake lineup is official, and their new XE3 based iGPU looks insane. I mean, this could change thin and light laptops, handhelds, and mini PCs forever. In this video, I wanted to talk about these new chips because I'm really excited about them, and I was also able to go hands-on with Panther Lake earlier this month. Intel invited me and a bunch of other people out to Arizona to check out their fully functional fab. I had to dress down in the clean suit, we got to tour the premises, check everything out, and see how these new CPUs are made here in the United States. It was definitely an unforgettable experience, and obviously when, uh, you know, companies do this, they definitely want you to talk good about their product. But with this setup, what I saw so far out of Panther Lake, and of course, when it comes to Lunar Lake last generation, which just happened to be one of my favorite newer CPUs on the market, Panther Lake does look like a really awesome upgrade. And at the time of them making the announcement, there's actually three chips in development. There's the 8-core, 16-core, and 16-core with 12 XE iGPU cores. That's the one that I'm more excited about, especially for handhelds. And that's not just speculation. That was something that was mentioned quite a bit in their press conference. Handhelds and, of course, AI. That's something that all of these companies want to get more out of with uh, lower wattage chips like this. But when you compare the new Panther Lake architecture to Lunar Lake, they're talking 10% more single-threaded performance. Doesn't sound like a lot, but yeah, that can really get you by. And single-thread on Lunar Lake was already pretty awesome for what we've got here. 50% more multi-thread performance when you compare it to Lunar Lake and Aero Lake. 30% lower power at similar multi-thread performance when you compare it to Aero Lake. 50% more GPU performance compared to Lunar Lake and Aero Lake. 40% more tops out of the NPU. 10% lower power draw than Lunar Lake, and 40% lower power draw than Aero Lake. So on paper right now, with just the power numbers they've given us, it's looking pretty interesting. And again, I was able to go hands-on with Panther Lake, so I did see this in action. Multitasking low power island demo here. On the far left, we've got Lunar Lake. Right there in the middle is Panther Lake. And on the far right, we've got Aero Lake. When it comes down to it, it might not look like a huge difference, but with... But when averaging this out, you're looking at around an hour and 20 minutes more runtime on Panther Lake than Aero Lake, and around three hours and 30 more minutes than Aero Lake with a system like this and a 70 watt hour battery. Okay, moving over to the three new chips they've announced so far. Panther Lake 8 core. It's built on Intel 18A architecture. With this, we get eight cores in total. So we get four Cougar Co. performance cores and four low power efficiency cores based on dark mount. This chip will also support up to 6,800 mega transfers per second RAM, and uh, you can do up to 6,400 if you're using DDR5, 8 megabytes of memory side cache, and for the iGPU, it's built on Intel 3, so it is XE3. We get 4 XE cores and 4 ray tracing units. Next up, the Panther Lake 16 core, built on Intel 18A, 16 cores, and with this, we get 4 performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and four low power efficiency cores. This will support much faster memory. So for DDR5, it's up to 7,200 mega transfers per second, and LP DDR5X up to 8,533 mega transfers per second. Still working with eight megabytes of memory side cache, and the iGPU looks to be the same. Based on XE3, we get four XE cores and four ray tracing units. So when it comes to graphics performance putting out between the 8-core and the 16-core, they're going to be about the same, but this will have more CPU horsepower, given that we've got 8 more cores here. But the one that I'm most excited about is the Panther Lake 16-core 12XE, built on Intel 18A. 16 cores, same configuration as the regular 16 core, so 4 performance cores, 8 efficiency cores, and 4 low power efficiency cores. This also supports much faster RAM, LP DDR5X up to 9600 mega transfers per second, 8 megabytes of memory side cache. But when it comes to the iGPU, this is the one that we will see in handhelds, based on XE3 with 12 XE cores and 12 ray tracing units. Right now with Lunar Lake, I mean, the highest in iGPU we have has 8 XE cores. And again, they did state that this has 50% more GPU performance than Lunar Lake. So basically, when it comes down to it, we've got that 8 XE core Lunar Lake iGPU that really still works amazingly in the MSI Claw 8 AI and a bunch of thin and light laptops out there that are very capable machines. But to see this being upgraded to XE3 and giving us more XE cores here, 
It's just going to offer more GPU horsepower for rendering uh, even AI tasks and my favorite thing, gaming. And that's something I was able to test briefly on the 16 core 12 XE. And with demos like this, it's not like we can pick and choose exactly what we want to play. But uh, soon enough, I mean, once they get these in our hands, we'll be able to really test it out. But what I've tested so far was really smooth. And of course, on these lower powered chips with iGPUs, frame generation is something that can really help out. And Intel recently announced XESS3 with multi-frame generation support. This is going to work on all ARC GPUs that have XMX engines, so even something like the 140V iGPU will support multi-frame gen. And a nice little frame generation override is coming to the Intel graphics software. In the last few months, we got a VRAM override, so having this multi-frame generation override is going to be really awesome for games that support it. Now, it would be nice if it would work on every single game, but the game itself will have to support XESS frame gen. But this is going to be really awesome that it works with older GPUs that have XMX engines. So you don't have to buy a brand new Intel Arc GPU to get multi-frame gen like you had to do with NVIDIA. As we, know with, as we know, with a lot of new games, you do have to compile shaders before the game officially starts. So you'll start the game up and you'll get a little loading bar. For instance, with something like Borderlands 4 on the lower end chip, I mean, it can take quite some time and burn a lot of battery. What Intel is doing here is pre-compiling those shaders on a server, and then you download those pre-compiled shaders. So you don't have to sit there and wait for it to compile and burn a lot of battery. It'll download it for you, and I'm sure it's not going to be for every single game. They'll have certain games that this is going to work for. But this is really great, especially for battery-powered devices like handhelds. This can save battery and time by downloading those pre-compiled shaders, so you can get up and running really quickly. And so yeah, I'm really excited about Panther Lake, especially for handheld gaming devices. And we know that Intel with Arc has done a lot of awesome driver updates since launch. Even with something like the MSI Claw 8 AI, I mean, we've seen a significant gain in performance since it's been released. And even though that's a Lunar Lake platform, I do think we'll see even more gains down the road with it. But when it comes to Panther Lake, putting it in a handheld like this would be really awesome. Having those 12 XE3 cores, and especially given that we've got 16 CPU cores, I think that's something that really held, you know, Lunar Lake back a bit. Because there were some cases where I knew I needed a little more CPU performance along with the GPU performance we already had to get a better frame rate in certain games. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching, and I'd love to know your thoughts about Panther Lake in the comments below. As soon as I can get my hands on a unit, be it a handheld, which hasn't been announced just yet, or a laptop, I will be doing a bunch of testing on the channel, so definitely stay tuned. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And like always, thanks for watching.